NXT next, right? Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Midweek War! We are here to talk some NXT, and I, of course, am Mad Mike. Y'all know who I am. And with me, as always, is Captain Underpants himself, Sorgatron. I wear the underpants on the outside. <laughs> wait, that's not how you're supposed to wear underpants? Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, what? I don't know. Sorg, um, we're here to talk some NXT. Yes, and what an NXT. I'm, I'm really, I was actually really excited for this NXT, and I'm really sad where I'm going to have to still put it because it's it's tough, tough competition. But yes. there was a lot of brawls. There was a lot of payoff. There was a dream match that I didn't know I expected that I wanted. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, well, Sorg, what was your word for NXT this week? My word for NXT... This week would be lyrics. 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 Okay. All right. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see where that comes in, but I can't think of anything. It's just something I noticed this week. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. I wait. No. Okay. I do, do you want me to just tell you? <laughs> Not yet. No. We'll they don't there. really. We'll it doesn't really fit anywhere else in the show. So my my word for this week is Devo. <laughs> oh jeez! Hey, do you, do you get it, Sork? No, I don't actually. Okay, all right. I we'll, don't know we'll much about. I don't know much about Devo. So it's it's the only thing you need to know about Devo. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the only thing you need to know. All right, sure. All right, all right. So, Sorg, uh, what's your good this week for NXT? Uh, my good this week, amongst many goods, um, was uh, Alistair Black and Velveteen Dream as a thing. And, and my lyrics is because I noticed that the people in Full Sail um, know the words to his song, which I don't because it just sounds like screaming. I love it, but it just sounds like screaming. And then I added it to my um, my Google Music so I can uh, uh, learn the words to it. Okay. Um, it, it was a fun segment. I still don't know if we exactly understand why Alistair Black is here. To kick people in the face. Yeah. Yeah. He I don't know. I, I'm still I'm still not there on him. I'm i I'm still not there for Alistair Black yet. I don't I don't know what it is. His wrestling is perfectly fine, but I, I don't understand why he's a thing. But I love I love the Velveteen Dream stuff. I thought that was pretty cool. Like when Black dropped down to the Namaste pro pose, and he just dropped down like Prince slash Goldust and just scooted out. Like that was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah that that, that was that was really good. It, it, it's too completely. Who cares why he's there? He's there and he's feuding with people. And yeah, and but but I, see and, the thing is when you advertise, he's going to tell us why he's here. And then you don't really tell us. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got interrupted. That's, slight, and, that's slightly problematic. Well, maybe, maybe next time. Well, you know, if that damn Velveteen Dream didn't slink his way in there. Yeah, I guess. But I know why Velveteen Dream's here. Like, I, I've gotten more character development out of him, and Alistair Black's been around longer. I don't know. Uh, my good this week is um, Bianca Belair. Because uh, she whipped it real good, Sork. Jeez. I like the idea of uh, Bianca Belair, but I do not like Bianca Belair, which I guess is the point. Well, you're not supposed to like Bianca yeah, Belair. She's, yeah, yeah, like she's, she's, yeah. Yeah, she is, and, and she's really good, and she's not a likable person. No, no, she's not. And I just I hate to see that the upkeep for that braid. Oh, jeez. I don't even want to know what that entails. I that don't want to know if it's real, so, if it's fake. So much dedication. You know when you know when she's going to be just done and they're just like yeah, that point where you're like they're just going to shit on this wrestler is when they make her cut it in like well, a hair versus I, hair match. I was going to say, I am waiting for like the hair versus hair mask with Bianca Belair. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actively excited for whenever that takes place like two years down the road or something yeah, like that. Yeah, because, I mean, it's... The, the funny thing is, she can still carry it with her and still use it as a whip. That is true. That is true. But does that then make it a foreign object? I'm not sure. Yes. Yes, it would, because it's not attached. Mm. 
It's like when someone takes off D'Lo Brown's chest protector. <laughs> All right, uh, Sorg, not every show is perfect, as we know. What will be your bad this week for NXT? Bianca Blair, because I don't like her. Wow. <laughs> Just, I don't like Rude. her. Rude. I don't like her. Rude. Like I like the again. I like the idea, but I just do not care for her at all. Okay. I don't know okay. what it is. Like, oh, I hear things pretty cool, and then I'm done. All right. Uh, my bad this week is um, uh, Adam Cole doesn't know the all the exits from Full Sail. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> he definitely doesn't know how to get out of there yet. Like they figured out how to get in. Listen, but they definitely don't know the exits. Listen, since he keeps sneaking in, he hasn't properly had the orientation yet. <laughs> I guess not. But I, that, that I mean, it's a, it's a bad, but it's a funny bad. Because that part was great. Where we finally get to see a little bit of comeuppance for uh, Cole, Fish, and O'Reilly. And that tag match was freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that tag match was just a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> sort. It, it was, and it was like a, it was a dream match I didn't know I wanted. Yeah, and I like that they're talking about Mustache Mountain maybe going into the tag team division. Good, good. I think that'd be amazing. It gives them something to do. You, good. Can you imagine a triple threat tag match with Mustache Mountain, Red Dragon, and Sandy? Mm. That sounds like a takeover to me. And also, um. Have we just forgotten about the Authors of Pain? I think we're supposed to until they show up on something. Yeah, on Raw or SmackDown? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, that's a very... Like, we haven't seen them for like a month. Yeah, we haven't seen them since TakeOver. Mm-hmm. And, and I can see that being a, you've been undefeated, undefeated, undefeated. You got beat. Let them kind of disappear and lick their wounds a little bit until we have the, you know, for that next thing that comes up. Do you think they just attack the shield guys at No Mercy? Wouldn't that be amazing? Hear that new day. Oh, you didn't you guys aren't hanging out with the Samoan guy anymore? Boom, two Samoans. Yes. I mean it, they could also attack New Day since Raw is apparently getting Oscar. Also could be great. I know the I know it feels like this kind of would be make more sense with the Usos, but wouldn't it be great if like the authors of pain were like Roman like if Roman went full heel and they were like his lackeys? Uh, if they were his Samoan SWAT team. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Oh, jeez. All right, uh, Sorg, what would you change about NXT this week? What would I change about NXT? Um, I would... Jeez. Can, can Johnny get better opponents? Yeah, by the way, I figured out why I didn't recognize Riddick Moss. Hmm. He had his hair down last week. Oh. I think I had a tiny bit of face blindness. I didn't recognize him with his hair down. Is that weird thing when I don't recognize wrestlers in street clothes? It's like, I sorry, I only know you when you're wearing a, like a, a yeah. your underwear, basically. Because Riddick Moss with his hair down just looks like Chuck Palumbo. Oh, like he does a little bit. Like an, like an off-brand Chuck Palumbo. You know what my you know my, my bad for the week should be? Um, what is what is Riddick doing with his tongue? Um, yeah, that was that was a little. <laughs> when he's talking need, to the other guy, we don't need to go into that. Like, was like, like Riddick, what is this tongue thing you're doing? It's like he, he's like, uh, uh, I don't know. It's like half out. Is that his thinking thing? Like, I know, it might like, be. Like, like I know, like my mom has that thinking face that I think I've kind of adopted, where like the tongue's kind of. A little bit, like off to the side, right? Hmm, hmm. And it's just like, what is, what is that thinking face? And why do you need oxygen to your tongue for that? Like I, I've seen that done in cartoons, but mm. only in cartoons. <laughs> Riddick Riddick Moss is like a living cartoon. So are are Riddick Moss and Tio Sabatelli just the poor man's Palumbo and O'Hare? <laughs> they are. Okay. I mean, I, I think I think the poor I think Plumbo and O'Hare were the poor man's Plumbo and O'Hare, but this is <laughs> that, that's a fair point. Um, all right. Uh, well, my change this week is I. 
can we not with Roderick Strong and Drew get Drew McIntyre? Can can we not? Because unless, and this is a huge unless, because I don't think this is where they're going. Unless, um, Roddy Roderick Strong is the guy that brought in Adam Cole and Red Dragon. And they're his lackeys, and they help him win the NXT title from Drew McIntyre. Can we not with this? It, it did seem a little like, hey, we're going to have this title match, but we just had this big blow-off thing at the end where it was Sanity and Drew coming out, right? And, and finally getting come up and saw on, on this, uh, what, what is their new uh, undisputed uh, uh, team or whatever? Um, it's It's... Yeah, yeah. You're just like, oh, no, give me that. Not that. No, 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 no. Yeah, like, I, I just, I don't need to see Roder Strong and Drew McIntyre in a who's more white meat match. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, let, let's put some gravy in that match. Like, just something. Some, mm -hmm. some cranberry sauce. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Could, like, just Roderick's what? Maybe if Roderick's wife hung out more. <laughs> I'd rather see Roderick's wife versus Drew McIntyre. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Roddy's wife. That Hashtag we, Roddy's wife. That we never remember the name of. <laughs> uh, she's the one that's not Shayna Baszler, not Ronda Rousey, and not the other one. <laughs> She's like so. Is she? I hopefully she's not the Ringo I, I, of the four think, horsewomen. I think one of them is Jessalyn. I don't remember which one that is though. But yeah, um, so Sorg, uh, very important question. Yes. Where do you rank NXT this week? Three, but not a distance, distant three. Okay. I loved a lot of this show. Um, I'll, again, a, a dense show, good stuff, nothing that made me yawn, right? I want to see more of this, uh, the, uh, forget the blonde girl. Um, D Dakota Kai is coming up. Lacey, Lacey Evans. Lacey, Lacey Evans, Evans, thank you. Uh, Dakota Kai is coming up. Uh, we got – oh, what, what else did we get? Hold By on. the way, Lacey Evans just kind of looked like if if instead of Steve Rogers, it was Peggy Carter who got the Super Serve. Oh, Super. yeah, she does a little bit, Super right? Super Serve. A little um, bit, like especially this outfit this week. Like I'm like – Someone needs to get you a shield, young lady. Mm -hmm. Like, just just have a shield and a little helmet, and it would be awesome. Huge fan of Lars Sullivan. Huge fan of this. Yes. Um, I still don't know what we're doing with him. Oh, wait, 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 all we're doing is having him beat somebody up of more significance. That's the true. point, to show you what yeah. Lars could do. This was a show-off match for him against a you know, more significant level, and you'll see where he goes from there. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's weird. Like, because I because I think he might have the chops to be NXT champion, but I don't mm, know who he beats for that. But he needs to run through half the roster before he gets there. Yeah. So yeah. And he, he needs to you know, he needs to have a you know. very significant match at the next takeover, and perhaps challenge at the takeover after, and you know somebody who, very significantly sized to take on a Drew McIntyre. Do you know who I'm scared that Lars Sullivan might fight with next? R Roderick Strong? No. Oh, God. No, I'd be okay with that because he'd just destroy Roddy. Um, I'm scared it might be Johnny. Ooh. Because ta ta tag team history. I'm very scared about that. Can I? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that to be a thing, but I'm very scared that could be a thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, some recommended reading. If you haven't been catching it in general, um, there's a great article that's on the front of WWE.com today called 10 Times Tommaso Ciampa Heartlessly Trolled Johnny Gargano on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, for instance, the one in the featured image is Happy 30th to the absolute worst best friend I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, or, or my favorite when they were, he was showing his image from the uh, 2k recreate the beauty that was uh take over Chicago. Anytime you want incredible graphics, Johnny's tears look lifelike. Uh, so, and there's a wonderful <laughs> Photoshop here of, um, of, uh, 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 the barbershop window, uh, with his face and a nobody, uh, the DIY t-shirt on, on, on the victim. 
Um, oh so God. there's some really, really good stuff there. So uh, he's coming back as Trollmaso Champa. It is, which <laughs> you know, so many pros. He, he had a glorious bomb. He just had like like a a, a trolling glorious bomb that wasn't. What did, what did he end up doing with that? Uh, oh no, it wasn't. Instead of it being Bobby Roode, it was just him beating up Gargano on his TV behind him. <laughs> so, yeah. No, if you haven't, go check out that article. Find on and oh, it'll make God, you love even more and want Tommaso to come back tomorrow. At this I point. Can't. I can't wait till he comes back. But I love this build of Gargano's getting back on the wagon and, and getting his opponent and trying to get some wins. And he obviously has a problem. These little things come up. Like, they're planting these seeds as he's kind of just like, I'm going to make it on like, my own, you know? I, I kind of feel like these Gargano matches should have been switched. So we can see someone tapping out to the Gargano escape. And then we have next week, like the week after that, Riddick Moss escaping that. Mm, okay, I get you. I get you. But he's the bigger guy, so I guess, I mean, that's where it could end yeah, up. Yeah, I, I know. It's just, I like, last week I didn't know that that submission was a finisher of his. Mm -hmm. So it would have been nice if these weeks were flip-flop, or at least the finishes. Yeah, yeah. Because, again, he hasn't won anything for a little bit, so we're, we're, yeah. we're not we're not up, up on it. So. Yeah. Um. All right, but I'm actually giving NXT number two this week. Whoa! Yeah, that, that tag match at the end was really fun. What was 205? 205 was number three. Hmm. Yeah, so spoiler alert, guess what number one is? <laughs> guess and, what number one is? And guess what number one's probably going to be for another tag, four weeks? Tag, I guess you guys. Yeah, then it gets really hard, and then we do one less of these shows. Oh, yes. Well, maybe. Who knows? We, we reassess some things. Life, yeah. life goals. Yes, hashtag life goals. Um, so, yeah, I, I gave NXT number two this week because I really like the Bianca Belair match. Mm -hmm. I like that the one whip just led to a finish. I thought that was fun. Instead, like in the Mae Young Classic where she was just whipping, um, I think it might have been Dakota Kai or Kyrie, like just a bunch of times. Yeah, and that, that sounded vicious. And which yeah. like, okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah, and, and I don't think that was souped up audio either. I think no. that was just natural sound of sounds. But uh yeah, so two uh two for NXT for me this week. All right, uh so Sorg, where can the good people on the internet find you? Sorgatronmedia.com. A lot of fine, fine shows there. And of course check out everything at indie wrestling us to check out a lot of these guys before they were these stars. Roderick Strong's on a lot of stuff there. Uh, Johnny Gargano, there's actually a best of that we live streamed a couple weeks ago on the Facebook page for Indie, Maya, Indie Wrestling .us. Uh So I know we'll be doing some more of that and, and a lot of familiar faces. There's a great before they were stars from Prime Wrestling. Guys like uh, uh, Elias, uh, uh, the Drifter Elias, as uh, uh, Logan Shulo, go look that up. Uh, go get your history. A lot of those older shows are like three and five bucks if you get older international wrestling cartel shows and a lot of great best ofs. Indie Wrestling .us. All right, and you can catch me at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter machine. Also, go to at Mayhem Show. Look for the hashtag MM for when I live tweet Lucha Underground and add special gifts like um, Thanos for some reason. <laughs> I saw that; it's amazing. Yeah. All right. Uh, so for Sorgatron, I'm Mad Mike, and we'll catch you next time where we know the exit here on the Mid Week War.